Frank W. Savage was born in Geneva, New York on January 3, 1853. In 1873, while serving as assistant cashier under Dr. J. M. Bishop of the Freeman's Bank in Columbus, Mississippi, he was advised by his doctor to move to a warmer climate due to severe bronchitis problems. Fortunately for the Florida citrus industry, he heeded his doctor's advice and in 1876 booked passage on a steamer from New York to Jacksonville and then down the St. Johns River to Sanford. After visiting with Dr. Bishop in Paola, he returned to Sanford where he was introduced to John A. McDonald, Dan Herrick, and Henry Key, who told him about available land located at Lyndhurst, which is now part of Eustis. This is where he decided to homestead and plant citrus trees. His health improved greatly and he went back to his old home in western New York for the following summer, where he married Emma Charlotte Lottie Morris in September of 1879. On July 1st, 1881, their son, Edward Morris Savage, was born and Frank moved the family back to Florida later that fall after a reoccurrence of his bronchitis. In the late 1880s, Florida citrus growers complained to the USDA in Washington, D.C. about the seriousness of a citrus blight, citrus foot rot, and other diseases attacking their trees, and requested help in combating the damage. In early 1892, two young scientists, Citrus Hall of Fame member Walter T. Swingle and Edwin F. Smith, spent several months interviewing Florida citrus growers in 13 counties before bringing back a signed petition for a federally sponsored program to determine how best to counteract these diseases. This resulted in Congress appropriating funds for a U.S. subtropical laboratory at Eustis, and Swingle immediately made arrangements to build a laboratory on land leased from Frank Savage, whom he had met while interviewing Florida growers. Savage noted that Swingle chose Eustis because he found it more free from frosts and therefore better suited for citrus research. Dr. Herbert John Weber soon joined Swingle as his co-worker scientist, and along with Savage, they created the first USDA field laboratory in the world. The scientists stayed in a small rooming house on Orange Avenue, and Savage constructed two laboratories in his six-room wooden frame farmhouse on his land. The scientists were convinced that a long-range citrus research plan was the key to success, and they instituted the search for and introduction of new species and relatives to citrus to be used for breeding experiments and for disease resistance. In 1893, they began a citrus breeding program and taught Frank and his son Morris to work with them in the pollination research for new varieties. After the 1894-95 freezes decimated the citrus industry, the scientists were called back to Washington and Savage voluntarily continued their work through regular mail correspondence with them. The research continued with Savage doing all the field work and sending the results to the scientists in Washington. Letters with instructions were sent from Dr. Swingle and cross-pollinizations were performed by Frank and Morris who would then harvest the fruit and send the seeds to Washington to be grown and evaluated. Those that offered promise were shipped back to Eustis as seedlings and planted in the field. The best of these during the early years were the Morton, Coleman, Rusk, Cunningham, and the Savage, so named for Frank Savage. However, all of these citrus hybrids cultivated during that period, the Tangelos proved the most long-standing due to their appearance, flavor, and aroma. In fact, the Orlando and Mineola Tangelos are still in commercial use today and owe their roots to the laboratory founded with Savage's assistance and continued with his cooperative spirit. He faced a lot of hardships, and if there was ever a person that had a right to throw his hands up and say, oh, well, you know, if USDA doesn't care enough, they've called their scientists back to D.C., I'm just going to quit. But he didn't quit. And times were hard then, really hard. That was 1892, 1893, 94, in those years. I mean, that, it was difficult. But for him as a grower to see the value of research, I, I just marvel at it, that, that a person at that time and that many years ago just saw such a high priority for research until he would not give up. He wanted to find the answers. He wanted to improve citrus, and he wanted citrus to succeed in the state of Florida. In 1908, 
Morris, after passing a civil service exam as a plant breeder, was appointed as a member of what was then known as the Office of Crop Physiology and Breeding, managed by Dr. Swingle. From 1908 to 1923, Morris kept track of all the breeding records, and although Dr. Swingle made the decision on what crosses were made, most of the actual crossing was done by either Frank or Morris. When uh, Swingle and Weber were recalled to Washington, um, Savage was left to continue the program. If uh, he hadn't been around and uh, the breeding program would have stopped, uh, when the USDA would have returned uh, in the 1930s, uh, they would have, in essence, had to start all over again. Uh, so Savage, through his effort, uh, in essence, kept from losing 25 years of citrus research breeding uh, in Florida. In a 1949 article in the Eustis Lake Region News, Morris Savage stated the orange grove in Lynnhurst subdivision consisted of 25 acres planted with sweet orange seedlings in 1884. When Morris retired from the USDA in 1949, there were 32 varieties of navel oranges in the grove, as well as grapefruit, tangerine, tangelo, and many other kinds of citrus trees that had been used in the USDA citrus breeding investigations. The breeding program would not have been possible without Frank Savage. It was a matter of being curious, a matter of being a leader, and a matter of being a risk taker. It's hard for me to imagine that the difficulties that he worked under and the dedication he must have had to do the things he did that laid the groundwork for what we're doing today with so many new technologies. He was the ideal grower cooperator and he was intensely curious, meticulous, able to carry out detailed instructions while practical, hardworking, and totally committed to the project. Frank Savage very well may have been the first grower cooperator. Savage died in February of 1931, approximately 50 years after moving to Eustis. The legacy of Frank W. Savage is evidenced through the uninterrupted pursuit of the horticultural research and development by his son, E. Morris Savage, grandson, Merle M. Savage, great-grandson, Kenneth E. Savage, and great-great-granddaughter, Heidi M. Savage. Kenneth and Heidi work with the University of Florida Research and Education Center in Apopka, Florida. Frank Savage was the foundation of the USDA citrus breeding program for almost 40 years, building a program that our industry still relies on today. He received little, if any, recognition for his efforts. However, today that will change, as we are honored to see him recognized as our newest member. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome the family of Frank W. Savage on his posthumous induction into the Florida Citrus Hall of Fame.